Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. He knew. He knew, he knew who you were. Yeah, exactly. And he knew that my background was really strong. By the way, he referenced me. I'm back here now. Gee whiz, I'm sorry. I, I got so involved here, whatever. And I hope all of you are sort of relaxing nowadays. Um, we're going to have a few good, a few more good summer days, if you will. And so it takes the time, you know, uh, knock off the stretch for that matter. Anyway, again, here we go. Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And um, we're going to just get right into my guest right now. You've seen Steve Buell. Uh, as you note, that uh, he has been a member now of the Portland Public School Board for the last three, four months now, right? Yeah, since right. July 1st. Since July 1st, you know. He was elected. Uh, he's got quite a background. You've, you, you've heard about his background before in the past, if you will. Former school teacher, and he's retired out the, at the, the education area, both from Vancouver and Washington area, and also Portland Public Schools. Uh, was a member of the board some time ago. And I mean, what what a guy. What, what, what background, if you will. And then, again, what an opportunity here for the Oregon Voters Digest in Portland Cable Medium, meaning that uh, we're going to be getting an update in an area of Portland Public Schools, major concerns about the largest school district in the state of Oregon, and people have been asking me and have been very concerned about where are we with Portland Public Schools, how's my kids, are they being educated, the highest dropout rates, you go on and on and on. And so, so it's going to be a pleasure, it's going to, it, there's an opportunity here uh, to get a sort of an update uh, with Steve being on the uh, on the school board, and all due respect, um, not not disrespecting the other members of the board, but they just don't have that that kind of a background, and uh, and we, we invite them to come on too at times if they would like to. All they have to do is just give me a call, and you know my number. Otherwise, uh, Steve's going to be here giving us a an update, hopefully on a month to month basis. He might be able to do that for us. And then in time there, if there's a 911 call, if you will, from the standpoint there's a major major issue facing our our kids. In Portland Public Schools, Steve's going to come on. Plus the fact we're going to be able to get some input and feedback from a from a statewide standpoint, even from a national perspective. If the if the uh, from the federal government standpoint, if the higher education czar, if you will, makes a, a point about the impact of of the classroom and whatever, we're going to invite folks like Steve or get a recommendation from him and whatever. So in all due respect, we really feel good about the fact that we uh, we have knowledge of Steve and we want to thank you, Steve, for being accessible. Yeah, it's so great to be here. Always. Really appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Well, why don't we just jump right up in it? Well, now that you know uh, uh, the, the, the doors are open, kids are kids are going to get ready to go to school. What's the status of the school there? Were, were they prepared? Oh yeah, Portland Public Schools is is really got a lot of wonderful teachers. A lot of great mm -hmm. teachers. They've really got people at the top on their administration who really care about kids. They got super hard-working school board members. I think the school board members are the hardest-working people uh, that I've ever seen on the school board. And your superintendent now? What's your superintendent? And superintendent, yeah, Carol Smith is yeah, a okay. marvelous person, wonderful person. But we... And so we've got all the makings of being this terrific school district. We are slowed down because we we really don't have enough money, and mm -hmm. the governor's going back and trying to get a little more money in the schools. He wasted a lot of it himself mm -hmm. in his programs, about $75 million probably, that the organization that I helped found, Oregon Save Our Schools, has been all over them, and they cut that back in the legislature. So what do you use the money for? Well, he, he's got... He's, He's sending some of it out uh, to different areas to kind of work with getting organizations behind the schools and so forth. He's got uh, he's got some money that's going into early childhood stuff. That's some of which is good, some of which isn't quite so good. Uh, he's uh, they're doing some just kind of. It's, it's stuff that just isn't, it's things that are just not directed at the schools necessarily. Going out and doing some uh, teacher uh, teacher uh, training and stuff, trying to set up places to do that. He, and it's just, it's not, you, got, you go into a public school in Portland and we don't have a librarian. Mm. But they're going to do some money, mm. send out some place to do something that's uh, out in eastern Oregon, maybe that doesn't have any direct effect. Well, tell me, is this something that was recommended by, uh, let's say, no, the this is former all deputy crew? The, I mean, no, they, I mean, what they, is that all about? This I mean, is I, kind I of a, about that. 
the whole Oregon education plan that Kitsoppers put forward, it was basically came out of the, uh, the Oregon Business Association. Mm -hmm. it was a, it's a business plan that didn't really in any meaningful way include educators. Mm -hmm. And so it's a business plan. A business plan. It's a business yeah. plan yeah. that, that a throws through education. A well, a lot of people are making a lot of money, for one thing. Teachers? No, not necessarily. They're going to have, they have contractors in, you know, with the big database that they're going to have. They're making money there. The, you've got huge, you're pushing the reform movement, which makes money for Bill Gates and Murdoch. And, you know, I mean, uh, Pearson Education back in New Jersey. I mean, we've talked about this at length, uh, you and I, in the past. Yeah, so yeah. there's, but it's not built around educating children. That plan isn't. Uh, there's nothing really that comes out of the governor's plan that really directly directs K-12, directs things to improve K-12 education on in the on the ground floor in the schools in the classroom. That's not what it well, is. Well, tell me something. You know, here's something that I'm sure the viewers would be very interested in. Rudy Crew, we we we've talked about that we, even before you got elected, even doing the campaign aspect of it, and the, the governor's point to the to the to the public was that hey this is what this guy is going to be able to do for us blah, blah, blah. point some deputy if you will and then all of a sudden one day he picks up and go I mean there, there was all sorts of expectation about this guy's going to really do some things even in the Portland public school area and then now he's gone but any any uh, were you able to digest that and just for the viewing audience, give us a little share about why he should have been there and what did he do did he, was he part of putting that plan together and you know where, where are we he wasn't really that? part of putting the plan together he was brought in to implement the plan implement the plan so the plan the was already there right and but the plan it wasn't very good in fact when they went out to uh and went out all throughout the whole state of oregon and and had hearings so to speak they weren't really hearings or input public input on the plan you know they would hold uh uh, evening discussion, have a couple hundred people show up, and then they would talk to the plan. Uh, the plan was panned <laughs> by about everybody in the place, all the educators, parents, everybody. They panned the plan. It was terrible. And hundreds of people came, maybe less than five, maybe five people might have supported the plan. Everybody said, no, this is the wrong plan. The money needs to go more directly into schools, more directly into kids. That's where we need the money. And well, that's what he's touting uh, now, though. Isn't, isn't yeah, that what he's now, saying? I need more money because I. Well, yeah, he. They do need more money to go. To go. I'm to just kids, talking right? about the governor's plan that Rudy Crew was brought in to to fix. For instance, one of the things they talked about was the silos. We have this board and this board and this board and mm -hmm. this board. We And they tried to put them all under one board, kind of, the okay. Oregon Educational Investment Board, mm -hmm. which is the one Rudy Crew headed up. Mm -hmm. And now Nancy Golden, the ex-superintendent of Springfield, heads up. And But last couple of weeks ago, at the last meeting, Ben Cannon, who is the advisor to the governor who used to be really an outstanding legislator and mm -hmm. is advising to the governor as a little bit mm -hmm. you know we don't like it at Oregon Save Our Schools we, we think he's kind of not giving him the right the good advice but he told them they're an only advisory board so now they're an advisory board mm -hmm. where if in even in the, in the uh, legislation it doesn't even mention the word advisory they were supposed to have this uh, this whole uh, control yeah, and right, make right, sure right, that right, the, right. that that we had this P what they call the you know P twenty preschool to twenty right, graduation right, from right. college system seamless system they yeah. were supposed to oversee this yeah. well now they got more they they put new boards in at the University of Oregon Oregon State going Portland back, State going back yeah. to where they were now, well, now they have more boards than they had at the start. before oh yeah Jeez. oh yeah yeah and and, and then now we're just saying this board is just advisory hmm. instead of actually in charge doing things being able to make decisions so it's it's just a mess well and, if and i would ask you what should we be doing just a, just a kind of a uh, some ideas uh, to this this new board now who this advisory board and even to the governor in the state in the state. state we should be focused on what takes place in the classroom in the classroom yeah and what we're doing is we're responding and pushing things that the federal government has told us we have to right. do. And then the state picks up and then they tell the districts they have to do that. Then the districts pick this up and then they tell the teachers and the principals, 
you have to do that. And then the, I mean, it, it's and the whole basis of it, the the education itself isn't built around what's good for children. It's built around what's good for corporations, what's good for maybe uh, politicians. It came out of the a lot of the stuff came out of the, the recent stuff came out of the big governors conference. I mean, it's not built around what educators who've been experienced for years and years and years as educators believe is the way to go in general. Well, you know, as huge a, portions of them that don't believe the okay. way they're going is the right way to go. Okay, as a let's say as a lay person, if I, if I hear about the corporations are very much involved, the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, he, here are the job builders. I mean, here are the jobbers, if you will. Here are the people that have, that have the jobs, if you will. Are, is, are, they, are they responding according to that from the standpoint of saying, we know what the jobs are in the future because we run the businesses aspect of it. So therefore we get it, we throw it back to the school and say, hey, look, schools, this is what we need. We were neat. We don't have to worry about IE importing folks uh, from outside. We've got it right here. We, I'm Intel. I'm Intel. I need X number of engineers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As I would be doing if this. They, if they were doing that, okay, that would make a good deal of sense. But they're not doing it. No, what they're doing is saying we we want uh, Oregon is bought in has has actually is doing something different than any place else in the country. They have a 40 40 20. Plan. 40 40 20. 40 percent of the kids they want to go to four-year schools 40. Now, yeah uh, 40 percent community college 20 percent graduate from high school so 100 percent of the kids graduate from high school and you put down but there's nothing behind that plan that's just those are just numbers picked out of nowhere I mean hmm. that's what uh, really if you look at the latest labor statistics you have like 69 percent or so something like that mm -hmm. Kid, uh, the jobs are going to be involved only are going to be only need people with high school educations mm -hmm. now I'm not saying don't educate people right, I'm right. saying educate everybody right, as much right. as you can right. really right. that's the way to go but we've created a system where now in the average the as I understand it somebody told me this the other day and I think it's probably pretty accurate but I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't bet my life on it or anything but about 25,000 is what the average kid comes out of college with debt now well you take that gets go down in some of these poor neighborhoods in Portland <laughs> and let's look at 25,000 worth of debt for those kids who are struggling anyhow and we're telling them okay you have to go to college we're not setting up trades for them we're not setting up entryways into uh, even into college in, mo in most cases <laughs> and, and so we've got this huge dropout rate. New gentrification model, huh? uh, kind of like you know. I mean, I'm just gonna yeah, have a huge dropout rate. Yeah, and why saying, are yeah. they dropping out? Yeah. One of the reasons they're dropping out is that they're not engaged in school. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they're not engaged in school is because we bought this stuff from the federal government, which is a boring and re really doesn't really necessarily help. Kids. What was that? What was that? All the all the testing, testing. programs no that child they left have. Behind. That kind the of no thing. child left behind. Now we're going to the Common Core curriculum. That's salvation for the for the problem problems now. The Common, common Core Common Core curriculum. What is Common that? Common Core. It's it's the Common Core state standards. And so what they've done, and this is really, this really has a lot to do with everything that, that I'm talking about. I can save our schools. Is talking about educators are talking about. Uh, you've got new standards that they put forth, and these standards are supposed to be higher and more rigorous and better. And they put them in 45 states, and they basically bribed the states to do them. Hmm. They gave you money if you would do it. Well, and if you go to the common, if you go to these new standards, we're now we're putting uh, one set of standards for every kid in the state of Oregon, hmm. and they weren't necessarily developed by educators. They were developed by this developed through the governor's stuff, college professors generally maybe haven't taught for years. In fact, the K three ones, and that's a K three is always a place where you you uh, argue about should we have be teaching kids to read real early in kindergarten, da, da, or should we be doing hands-on things and, and having them develop emotionally and, and physically and stuff as they go along. I mean, there, there's, it's a very complex, very, very difficult thing. We did, there was not one kindergarten through third grade teacher involved of the original, boy, I can't remember the number, 135, I think. Mm -hmm. Of the 135 people that put together the Common Core curriculum, the Common Core state standards, mm -hmm. there, was one, there was no 
K through three teachers involved in the K through three. And that's standards. throughout the country. And yes, and so not only we put it in forty five states, we put those standards in place for every kid in the state of Oregon in kindergarten through third grade, and we didn't have one kindergarten through third grade experienced teacher involved. Wow. Now, wow. something's going on that has nothing to do with education. Well, well let's think about I the mean, Obama so, so why do you do that? Is a question because these big companies right. can sell the tests. The big companies can sell the prep stuff. The big companies can sell you the teacher, uh, the the teacher training things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the and companies like Bill Gates can sell you the software that you need to do the testing, and they can sell you the computers that you need to do because you got to upgrade all your computers. Never mind that in some schools it shuts down your computer lab for three months, three months, so you can't you put your kids anywhere near a computer for three months. Well, see, wait a minute. There's something, something I mean, wrong and so something wrong exactly with, that's wrong with that. yes. I, and, I think about and, the Obama administration, and I think about the czar, if you will, the superintendent, the federal superintendent. Yeah, Arnie He's Duncan. from from Chicago. Got me. Right. From the from those depressed areas. I mean, high dropout rates and this, that, and the other. I would think that those things should have been discussed at the table, and, and the reflection should have been to basically respond to that issue in a very effective way. What happened? You know, for one thing, the the. People who have a good deal of money, who like to see something like the Common Core state standards, which yeah. would have been good if they'd have come out of educators, maybe. Right, exactly. But you could have said, well, okay, we think we need more rigorous standards, educators. Right. But there's this big push by people who have a lot of money, mm -hmm. they, and they control a lot of the political spectrum. I mean, you, you know, Bill Gates is a powerful guy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, the Koch brothers, they're powerful guys. And these organizations get together and push it. And they push it. And even you have things like Stanford Children who will push these things because they get grants. Mm. And they can then all pay all their people and expand and become a more powerful organization because they get grants from these big companies. I mean, it's, it's, it, we even though I think it's the National Education Association big grant. So they're kind of, and you give somebody $2 million, they kind of go, mm, it's not so bad. Maybe, yeah, we need to, you well, know. So, well, who's sitting, at the, is who's sitting at the table? Which table? Looking out for the kids. The education at the well, end of the in, day. In Oregon, there's nobody really sitting at the table looking out for the kids. The closest you have is Hannah Vandering, who's the Oregon Education Association president. She's in the OAIB, and she's on that board, and she speaks out. She is on that board. She's on that board and speaks out fairly regularly. Uh, and David Reeves, who's the uh, American Federation of Teachers president, I believe, mm -hmm. but I'm not positive, in the, in the American Federation of Teachers in the community college mm -hmm. stuff, he'll speak out sometimes. Does it talk to transparency? But I mean, then you got... Do you have access to this stuff? Oh, no, no. The, the, in fact, the, the final plan that came eventually before to the... Yeah. the for the governor's recommended plan, mm -hmm. they had like six secret meetings. You weren't allowed to go. You couldn't even sit in. And they were headed up by the man who's, you know, who was headed up the other ones, uh, who's from the business community, you know, Duncan Wise. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's all in secret. And then when they go out to the community, the community says, forget it, this is no good. Then they go back and they do the same thing. And eventually then what happens is they mandate it down to a district like Portland. Hmm. Portland's got a lot of smart people up who care about kids at the top. But what we've become is a district of compliance. Hmm. We have to comply with these things instead of sitting down and saying, what's good for kids? You know, what is good for kids? What, mm -hmm. what, what, what do we need to do? And what we're not doing in Portland yet and I'm hopeful that they will eventually begin to do this, mm -hmm. is we're taking the things we're supposed to comply with and just complying. We're not really sitting down and thinking well about how should we comply. For instance, when the Common Core, the, when we're doing the Common Core uh, state standards as a district now, there's some schools that are messing with it differently, mm -hmm. but as a district, we're not sitting down. We didn't, for instance, what, what I thought we should do, should, what I think we should still do, is we should get all the best teachers that we can find in Portland, mm -hmm. a number of good teachers who really know, and say, okay, here's the standards. Now, what's good about them? What's bad about them? Mm -hmm. What do we really want mm -hmm. to implement? What do we really want to mm, fudge on, so to speak, mm -hmm. really? 
and and what and how do we want to approach this? What would you do in your classroom if you were given the full? And then we pull these great teachers together, and it gives us terrific advice. We've kind of taken the teachers in Portland and pushed them over in a little corner over on the side, and then we made the decisions all in the back rooms, basically, hmm. and in the administrative situation with, in Portland. In Portland, right. without bringing in the teachers who are out there every day on uh, on uh, front lines. Hmm. And Portland has some marvelous, wonderful teachers. And, and one of the reasons Portland has some really great teachers is because it's Portland. It attracts people, mm -hmm. and they want to teach in Portland, live in Portland. And so in a way, they'll put up with a lot of guff, which they have, because they want to live in Portland. And so they're teaching in Portland, they want to, you know, and, but Portland's such a great place to live, it attracts really good people often. And so you get a pretty good choice. And so we've got some really terrific teachers, but we're not using them, we don't use them. But, yeah, we, got but, them locked out. we got them locked out. Now we're fighting with them over the, we're fighting with them in the negotiation process. You know, we, we made some drastic errors on the In terms school. of the contract. I mean, they, yeah, do they have made, a contract yet? No, no, they're still a long ways away, it appears yeah. to me. Well, and, yeah. and we made a lot of mistakes because hmm. instead of sitting down and saying, look, here's some real serious problems in education. Hmm. We've got, for instance, how do you fire our bad teachers? Yeah, right. That's a, and, that's and, been a major and, problem for years. For years. Yeah, how? For years. And we want to deal so with where that. Are we so how do, right yes, exactly. That's mm -hmm. the question. How do we go about doing that? How do we deal with the transfers? I want That's this teacher in my school, but no, I don't what I'm going to do right, with this exactly, one. Right, so how right, are we going right. to deal with that? Right. That's, That's huge. Yep. And and how do we decide really how we treat the teachers and who's in charge of stuff? And and instead of sitting down over a period of time and developing this good mm -hmm. relationship with the teachers, and and saying let's sit down and talk about how we can work this out, how we can how we can get rid of these bad teachers, though maybe we need to get rid of them. Not a lot of them, but there's some out there. Well, I thought the everybody knows there are, but the, yeah, but the yeah. discussions have never taken place. Yeah, I thought that was the whole idea of the monthly discussion where the public could come and you guys are there no, 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 talking no, no, about no. these issues. No, 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 and, and, and but and so <laughs> and they were saying, okay, let's settle this in negotiations. Well, good luck with that. But where is the public? I mean, and we, you know, and they, and we've, we've the school board kind of kicked the teachers in the head a couple times. Anyhow, we've done some stuff that teachers really hate: going to the newspaper, sending out emails to all the parents, criticizing the teacher contract. I mean, those are stuff that, that just alienate the whole. But Steve, situation. you know, in all due respect, you know, from the public standpoint. Um, uh, that's why we have this so-called election situation. You know, the whole idea we're getting the best people from the public side of who who understands. That's what the school board is supposed to be doing. Exactly, because they got they got elected to do that, overseeing, if you will, a system that says at the end of the day, the concern of that particular school board should be one thing: Did Johnny and Mary get? Did they get a good education? Did they graduate? Are they now whole students? I mean, can they go to college? I mean, can they compete? Are well, they able to go out and, and get a job? Get a, get a job. Are they able to, to be successful in their life? On and on and on. All, all those things. Yes, yeah, that's, well, that's well, the expectations there's, there's from the three, public. The, What's the problem? Three things that this, well, there's three things, in my opinion, three things the school board does. That's the, that's the second one. That's to oversee the whole idea and make sure Johnny and Mary get a good. Right, right. Or whomever. And the, uh, but, and, and you also are in, you're, you hire and supervise a superintendent. Right. Okay, and the third thing you're supposed to do is bring legislative legislation to the table that improves the situation. Right, exactly. Okay, well, we're... Are we doing that? We're, we hired the superintendent. Are we supervising? Yes, probably. Are we overseeing and making sure that things working? No. Are we uh, bringing things to the public? In the last, I found two two resolutions that school board members, not counting me, who's already brought three, but two school, two resolutions in the last two years that I've been able to find. And neither one of them. Resolution. Resolutions. Resolutions from the, from the school board. Mm -hmm. School board member walks in and says, I want to make this, I want to make this, we need to make this change. Okay. And then to they make that the resolution, they vote on it and decide to make change to improve the situation. Right. There's been two in two years, but they weren't about the school district per se. 
they weren't about something important in the public schools. They were generalized resolutions. One was on and supporting gun control. Uh, and so basically the school board is doing everything in the back room. The back room? In the back rooms and email streams. So you got the email streams and you got the back room. And everything is getting done there. They don't, occasionally something will come out and get voted on. But all the decisions, they're not being made in public. But what impact does this have on little Johnny? And, well, and it's, got little three, it's got three impacts, I think. Okay. And that make education, that make it harder to improve education. Uh, one, of the, one of the things is that you marginalize, well, one of the things is that you marginalize people. In other words, you marginalize uh, parents. You minimize and marginalize their input. So if everything's being done in the back room, they're not parents back right, there. Right, exactly. You're marginalizing teachers exactly. and employees. Exactly. You're marginalizing the whole community and minimizing their influence. And the you're also marginalizing and minimizing, of course, as you full well know, the, my, the people of color. Yeah, yeah. Because they ain't, they ain't in the back room necessarily either. I, I mean, right. that's been a, how long have we had that problem? Yeah, yeah, For, right. and, but we're now, we still think people who even are really pretty solid guys still end up doing it in the back room. Because, you know, some solid guys in the school board. Uh, I, Tom Curler's not involved in that because he's new, like I am, and he seems to have a little different attitude about it. But uh, another thing that we do is that nobody, there really is no decisions that you can hold people responsible for. Because who made the decision? When huh. was it made? Huh. It wasn't done in, a, in, in any type of uh, transparent way. It wasn't done, in, in, the deliberations weren't in public. So who do you hold responsible for the decision? Since you don't know who's responsible for it, mm -hmm. how do you hold somebody accountable? And so no, what it happens is that nobody, nobody's in charge and everybody's in charge. You can't find where to hold anybody responsible. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's really, that's really a, a difficult uh, thing. Well, let, let, let's uh, and, and, and this backroom stuff, this backroom stuff is just basically bad government, which will create more bad decisions instead of creating, you know, the, the better the government, the better your decision, usually. Right, right, right. Uh, and and it's, it's really the reverse. Well, I tell you what, you, you really hit on something that I'm sure that the public wants to hear a little bit more about. One, it's not a paid position. Two, you have to run citywide. You, right. Well, yeah. And, you but, know, so we got some, there's some you, issues there. People volunteer for it. I know, but my point is, that, to me, as far as I'm concerned, the, the concern for, for the education of our community, if you will, is so important that it shouldn't be a volunteer mindset aspect of it. You, you, I mean, imagine if a person just wanting to volunteer, you, you got to get paid. How are you going to eat? That's, that's serious stuff. Well, yeah, but okay. that's about... I can, see, well, I can see what the problem is to a certain degree. That's just me. That's me. Okay. Look, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back uh, to uh, uh, Steve Buell. And, uh, again, he's on the Portland Public Schools. Again, again, by the way, this is a, it's a, it's a proactive kind of a thing. This is not about beating up anything. It's, it's about trying to talk to a solution for little Johnny and little Mary. At the end of the day, we need an educated society, and that's really where we're coming from, and that's where, that's where Steve is coming from. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome again. Welcome back again, again to, to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard. We're interviewing uh, our Portland Public School uh, uh, through uh, E. Steve Buell, who's now on the board of Portland Public Schools. And, and what we've been doing over the last half hour is that uh, we've been talking a little bit about the state and, and its impact on the, uh, the kids here in, the, in this area here. And then now we're sort of like talking about Portland Public Schools. And as I indicated before on the front end of the deal, this is going to be an update on an ongoing basis. And we're just going to try to keep you informed because I think it's very, very important that there's a transparency there and that uh, the folks who, are, who we've elected to office are responding to the issues at hand here, especially in the Portland Public Schools area, because Steve is part of that board, if you will. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the makeup of that, of that board and, and what it is. What is the definition of the school board, et cetera? And then how do we still it's always going back to the same deal. The bottom line is the education, the output. The output. What kind of kids are we coming? Are we we we're ending up with from a Portland public school area. Perspective. Well, you got to define talk the output. You got to define the output. Okay, let's talk. Because the state's right, right. The state's definition of the output is that they score well on the tests. But my definition of the output is that they're educated well. Educated well. Yes, so you can yes. read well. You can think well. You can. You have a broad background and knowledge and things that are important in the community. You're able to understand when you go out of school about work. You're able to. Uh, you're able to go out and take care of your family. You're able to take care of your money. You're able to. We're educating people for their lives, not just for, say, college entrance. Right, right, which right. Which I right, don't right. have a problem. I mean, absolutely, educate people for college yeah, yeah, entrance. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not just that. It's so much more beyond that. But look like, it, that. But look like it's so, kind of just a hundred percent plan, hundred percent college. Right you, now, you mentioned 40, kind of 40, 20, but it looks like it's just 100% college. And you, hey, and people where's are failing. The, where's the vocational yeah, where the, And where's, where's the tied to the yeah, where trades? Where are the jobs? Yes, where, right. where are those opportunities for kids? Are, are we who, talking about this on the board? Are we talking about this? What's the makeup this, of the board? This uh, is a... Give, give, me, give me some ideas. What's well, the makeup of that board? What do you got down there? Well, you have, you have six people. Okay, who are And, and you got... Tom Curler, who's just elected, new. Who is he? What's his he, background? He he was one of the founders of the Chinook book. Chinook book. Which yeah, is, which is a, a book that goes out and has has uh, coupons and stuff, and it's pretty good. It's very well received. He's a smart guy. I like him a lot. The Chinook uh, book. Okay. You got you and he he does some consulting work, for, and I don't know the basis of his consulting, but he's a good guy. Uh, you've got uh, Pamela Knowles, who's interested in. The, who was, I believe, the president of the, or of the uh, Portland Business Alliance. I don't right, know if she's right, the president right, right. involved in there, so she's business. She's a lawyer. She's still, business, she's, she's business, still a lawyer. She's a lawyer. Okay. And, and, and she was a, a teacher at one time. She was a substitute teacher a for substitute a year. A substitute teacher for a year. Yeah. Okay, and and then you got, uh, and then you've got Greg Belisle. He and Pamela Knowles are the leadership team. The He's the chairperson. She's the vice chair, but they're no, the so leadership team. No, we got to talk about this. What's his background? Greg, Greg does some. Uh, Greg works in the uh, Sun program and Sun does program. the Sun program, which is after school programs for, through Multnomah County. And I think he's got an administrative position. So now. he's a teacher. He's been. A, uh, well, he's not a teacher. Has he taught teacher. before in the past? No, I don't believe so. But you know, he introduces himself sometimes as a teacher. I'm going, I don't know, is he, he teaches in the Sun program, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the Sun program. And you've got uh, Bobby Regan, who you know from yeah, know, years I know, back. I know she, Bobby. she actually has some really great ideas and stuff and, and really is kind of seems to understand a little more about government and how it should work. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got uh, Ruth Adkins. And I don't know, she, she works and I don't know her background. Hmm. She was a parent at Ainsworth hmm. School and I can't tell you much about her because I, I can't, I can't, I haven't been able to understand her educational philosophy mm -hmm. yet. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I don't know. What about the student? Uh, uh, you got a uh, student makeup, right? Right. Well, we also have Matt Morton, Matt Morton who's okay. a great guy who's the head of NAIA. You know, what's NAIA? Uh, Native, Native American, American Youth Association. So what's his background? He, he's, a, he's, he's the head of NAIA now. That's I mean, it. He, he, well, it's a pretty good organization, and he really knows his, his social agencies and those things. I mean, he's really got a strong... Focus on Native uh, American kind of issues. Well, but he's also he's good all the way along, I think, on issues of uh, ethnic background, race. But no teaching background. He runs a school. 
Went to school. Yeah, I don't think he was an actual teacher, but I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of don't care what they did. I care how they think. You're right. Yeah, and, I understand and, that. And, and he, uh, he's a pretty good guy, mm -hmm. but he, I'm, I, I'd like to have him get a better understand mm -hmm. how the government, how, how our, how the board is working, and how that hinders education the way that the system that we're working. He, he's got the right attitudes about education, but I'm not sure he understands yet, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to mm -hmm. push him in those directions. I'm hoping, you know, if you're out there in the public, And what about the young person that's on that board? Uh, yeah, Andrew Davidson, who's uh, is a student, right? He's a student, and he's a great, he's a great young Sen guy. Senior, sophomore. Great young guy. Was, he's a senior. He's a senior. And senior at Grant, and he's a great young guy. Okay. Uh, has a lot of the best attitudes of about education of anybody on the board, really. Okay. And, and so it, that's the makeup. And then you, you're you on the board. I'm on the board. Okay. And your background, mm -hmm. we've you talked know, about I, it many yeah, times over. Background teaching and education, and, education and stuff. Exactly, exactly, not exactly. such a good background in, say, business, or mm -hmm. not such a good mm -hmm. background you, in social agencies. Yeah. Come and work there. Right. But it's a real good background in education. I was hoping that they would say, okay, you got this background. Let's here's some let's listen to what you have to say about the mm -hmm. educational mm -hmm. aspects but ha hasn't happened yet tell me something when when you were elected to the school board uh, and compared when you were elected to school board in the past and and to date when you're elected to school board is there a situation where there's a session where where you you come to the table and someone basically gives you a presentation in terms of where we are in Portland Public Schools, the oh, yeah. definition of yeah, the yeah. Well, what, what is a school board? How you're supposed to have a school board memory? Yeah, we even had I a mean, we even had a uh, kind of little conference day, and you know we had paid twenty five hundred dollars to have some uh, people tell us how you should act as a school board member. That was that was a couple weeks ago? Like, well, how are you supposed to act? I mean, what, well, what are you supposed to do? I don't agree with any of this stuff. <laughs> what, they, what, they, like, what is it? How, it's see? supposed to work. You're the school board. You're elected. Your job is to make sure that things are going well. That's You're elected to run the schools, basically. Not the everyday things, but to what takes place in the schools. That's what your responsibility is. And you hire the superintendent to do what you mean, think. Yeah, right. Well, see, but that's not how they, that's how it's that's supposed not to work. But that's, that's not happening. That's not, no. They, what they're, and what they push in these, they're pushing, it's a national movement put forward really by the Broad Foundation, which is another one of those big foundations that gets money, likes the reform movement, and they, they're trying to privatize, eventually privatize the schools, what they want to do, yeah. and, and take away the local control. And so they push to have everything done by the, by the staff. The st everything comes out of the staff. Well, who voted for the staff? You know, they were hired, and they're educators, and they're professionals, but who voted? Nobody voted for them, but they're in charge of everything, and the school board, our school board, goes in the little back room with them, sits down, decides what's going to take place, and then they come out and tell what's taking place. But it's, the decisions aren't open. They're not really out front. And, and this is the Broad Foundation pushes that. This is a national movement. It's a national movement mm -hmm. to have to, to move away from local control. Mm -hmm. So instead of having the people of Portland control the education of Portland, mm -hmm. uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. Salem. Mm -hmm. What, what if I would ask you, Stand just as, again as a lay person, if I would ask you, what should be the makeup of that school board? Well, I don't uh, have... A, 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 I don't, a school board member. Uh, what, only, what kind of a person, what kind of a background should that... The only like problem that, that I have is the election process. The election process. Well, okay, what it, do you mean? it's... I ran in a bigger area than the mayor of Portland. It's bigger. School district's bigger right. than Portland. Right, right. So you got Charlie Hales, Eileen Brady... And Jefferson Smith, they all spent over a million dollars. I spent 17000 in the same area to the educate. Right? Yeah. City. So how how do I, with $17,000, mm -hmm. I spent, send out 46000 brochures. Mm -hmm. But how educational, I mean, compare that with a million dollars for all three of the people on uh, running for mayor. Wow. And so that... that 
it'd be nice to get that fixed. Maybe I should just run in a district well, why not? that has why, a problem. Why, but, why is it but that? The, but we, the other the other problem is if they're gonna if you're gonna run citywide, then let people run citywide. Uh, the, yeah, but, it was but every, put, every area is a little different. I mean, you're up in the hills a little different than the people down in, yeah, in, in the yeah. poor areas or southeast. And Portland, the whole right? idea of putting I mean, it the way they did was so you had to have people in certain areas come out of those areas to run, but not so you run citywide. So really philosophically, it's not a bad thing. But the problem is that it's $17,000. Yeah, but the people who will control the, control the vote will be the people with the money. Oh, with yeah, the money. Yeah. Well, I just... With the I money. Am. Yeah. I, I mean, sure, I won, it might be district. I won. I, won. What, what I had want? more money because I got the you, money from the school teachers. You, 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 that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, had you exactly. not had that piece in there... If hey, I had that piece, I wouldn't be sitting on the right. school board. It, exactly. If I hadn't had that money piece... Exactly. $12,000 exactly. from the school exactly. board from the teacher and... and so how should we fix it? What do you think we should do? I mean, the governor's listening to this. He wants some some feedback because everybody's concerned well, about I know. the it, largest how, school how district we in the state of Oregon. What? Important, important public schools, you know, from the standpoint well, well, we of how do we get the most effective people on the board? Well, for one thing, you have to be able to hold them accountable. How do we do that? Well, you get you move the stuff back into the public where people can see what's going on. Okay. And, I mean, that's how democracy is supposed to work. And how do we do that? You say you move back to the public. Well, we start to... We start to uh, Instead of just having the school board sit and listen to reports, yeah. we actually have them discuss problems and what is going on and try and, and come to solutions for those problems. We can read reports. Well, one thing, like one, for instance, uh, that's a major interest in the, in the area for that matter, is the voc -ed thing. Voc -ed, yeah, voc -ed is shop, a medical example. shop, and whatever. I got a better one. I'll Are we discussing that? Are we discussing that now? Like, as if to say, why are don't we, we have discussing it? it? Yes. I think that the. And implementing the, it? Yeah. This is really complicated for even the amount of time we have in the show. They, we're not discussing it in public as a school board. No, not mm. discussing it. Mm. We might say, "Oh, we'd like to have more vocat," mm. yeah. and the superintendent, I believe, has a little committee that's working on it. I haven't something I haven't checked in yet. But what happens is everything that you want to try to fix, like vocat, there's something that gets offset that offsets it. So somebody who doesn't want to do bokeh, they offset it with something else. Well, yeah, we need to fix bokeh. And somebody might say, yeah, but what we really need is librarians. And then somebody says, well, you know, I, I made the, the now famous motion about cutting the grass. Let's cut the grass on, on, on our uh, and, and Let's cut the grass in, uh, on our lawns. In but the how schools. can they compare? And, and so the thing is that the cutting the grass, well, we the the they talked about, well, we can't cut the grass because we can't spend money now outside of the budget process. We can, but they didn't want to, and that was the excuse. And the other excuse is, well, we want to spend money more directly in the classroom. Well, fine. Then let's spend more money more directly in the classroom. Let's take the money I'm suggesting we can spend for cutting the grass and put it in the classroom. Fine. Let's put uh, librarians in. I'll pick three schools and we'll put librarians there. If you don't want to cut the grass, put it there then, if that's what you're going to see. But see, they use that as an Jesus excuse. Christ. And so uh, I learned about this when I first, uh, years ago I called up and said, look, I got all these kids over at Lane Middle School, they can't read. We need to put this money yeah. in here so these kids learn to read. They're in that right. darn seventh grade and they literally can't read. Right. And the answer was, well, we need to spend money in uh, little kids, which is fine, you do. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. did they spend more money on the little kids? No. Did they spend the money? No, it's it's they it just it's an offset. Nobody is responsible. You can't say, for instance, let me give you a, what I think is a great example of this. We have a test that we're giving to ELL kids, and the ELL, ELL kids, well, it, it, English the, a, the English language second, learners, right, right, really, right, and okay. they, we now call them. Well, we have a new term now, EB. I can't. I'll I'll know it after I hear okay. it a couple times. Okay. I just heard it the other day. All right. and, and and so what we we have a test we give those kids who don't speak English very well. Right. Called the ADEPT test. We're going to start giving it this year. And we're going to give it to them twice a year. And here we have these kids who can't speak English very well at all and we have a teacher who's working with them. Maybe she, let's say she has 70 kids, okay? Which might be the number that she has. She probably has more than that in most cases. But in high school you got 70 kids and you're trying to work with them in the classroom and teach them English and get them in deal you know, and get through all this stuff. And so we say, okay, we want to give the adept test to them. And you think, well, okay, you give them another test. No. It's a one-on-one -on -one test that takes up to 40 minutes. 
and she has 70 kids. And, I just, and you give it during class. So as you're giving the one-on-one -on -one for that 40-minute period, what do you do with the rest of the kids? Where is your teacher? Giving this test. Not teaching the class, giving this test. And we're going to do it twice a year? So 40 times 70, do the math. But you know, I mean, but, but you know, what I'm saying is people don't understand that. Right. That's the real world out there, and we're still doing that kind of stuff. It's absolute insanity. Sure, it's a good test maybe, and everybody would love to have it, but if we're going to do that, don't pull the teacher out of the classroom where they're teaching right. and have the teacher sit there and go one-on-one -on -one for, 40, for, for 70 straight days, maybe, or something. I mean, you know, it's absolutely insanity, but we still do it. And that's what I'm talking about on compliance. Mm -hmm. we're, we need to give all these tests. So we're going to give this one. Instead of sitting down and saying, look, you don't have time. we don't have time for a teacher to do this. I'm sorry. We'd love to give this test, but we don't have time. Or if, we, if it's that important a test, Fine. Hire somebody to come in just to give the test. Fine. Spend the money. Come in and but, give just to give this. But what I'm saying is okay. we're not approaching the education as if we're educating right, people. Right. We're approaching it as if we're complying to what somebody someplace else tells us we should do. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down and talk to administrators in Portland who care about kids, who are marvelous people, smart smart people. We've got lots of those. And I'll say, well, you know that's not right, what we're doing. We need to change that. And they... Mm, but Steve, you well, know... I gotta ask you that. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it's, but, and, and it doesn't change. Okay, but I gotta ask you this question. Look here. You went to school. You graduated, right? College or whatever. But when you were going through K-1 to K-12, was there such thing as ESL and LLL and whatever? No, but I grew up in Tillamook. No, but hey, but regardless. <laughs> there was nobody in Tillamook. But hey, then. I went to school also, There too. is now in Tillamook. No, but my point is that there was nothing there during that particular time. But I tell you what, what was there to motivate people to, to actually get to the, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. We had voc ed stuff. Okay, that was a motivator. Okay. Well, well, and you learned. Uh, if, you didn't, it, if you didn't speak English, trust me, I didn't know the people who were around me. But guess what? They were making A's and B's and all this other stuff as, as I was going to school. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. Why, why, are we, why are we spending so much time trying to educate the world? Well, one, we're not educating person. the world. We're educating the kids who are in our district. And those kids, one of the things that happens, if you, you need to educate those kids. Yeah, but what, what, right? what, and the fact that we, they what, didn't have them a long time ago and didn't educate them doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing that today because the world's changed what, quite a bit. What were they doing? The same kids were coming in this country to begin with. What, what were they doing with them then? Well, with them then, they were teaching them school, but they were also teaching them to some degree. I mean, they had yeah, they uh, had that type of instruction. There was no class. 40 years ago when I was down in Woodburn. There was nothing oh, in, in, been, in my arena. There's been that stuff. There's been that stuff in those schools for years and years and years. But it was never known. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm still kind of. I don't know. Did you? How many did you have? How many kids did you have? I mean, I, I, I worked I, down in. Uh, I was down south and, you know, it, in Texas and it going did, to school. And it and, didn't, but it and, didn't work for them either. What do you mean it didn't work? It didn't really educate those children. You didn't, you, we weren't teaching them We had them languages, English. we had languages and the you know, electives and whatever, we, we, people took language. I'm talking about that the kids who came in, uh, when I was started in Woodburn in 1967, yeah. okay? They had all these little kids with Russian background that you know, they called them the old believers and they all yeah. came, went to yeah. school, that's yeah. so long. Okay. Okay. And nobody in the whole system could speak any, Russia, any Russian. In the so whole then, how did they deal thing. with? How did they deal exactly, with? they didn't. That's the problem. But at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, they didn't get educated and they dropped out of school. And then, at the end of that day, what happens then? Well, then they went and got a job working in a mill or in, ah, in, a, in the trades, case, trades. But in the case of the trades. in the case of those kids in, in the the those kids with the Russian background, the new old believers in Woodburn, where they worked, they worked on uh, at a. A poultry factory yeah. that was set up by yeah. the Russian community. It's a job, though. By the Ru See? Exactly. It's still a job. They did go it's out and get ed that. stuff. Exactly. I mean, that's no, how I you get the motivation. You have to yeah. while, but, you know, you go into the deal say, hey, look here, by the way, uh, you want to go from point A to point B and maybe operate this piece of machinery? You've got to, you've got to be able to uh, read, the, read the description, et cetera. Guess what happens? I get motivated. Yes, exactly. But if nobody's there to teach you, then you don't get motivated. But my point is that that same... Because those parents, Russian kids went off, the kids, kids of the Russian background, they went off and worked in a community, in an area, in a business, which spoke Russian. Not English. 
They yeah. spoke Russian in that. I guarantee you they spoke Russian. And they weren't hiring anybody who didn't speak Russian. Well, the owner but, of the shop exactly. hired the guy. But, uh, exactly. But those, where are those opportunities even today? You know, go down to Tillamook. I, I went through college by working mills. The mills are gone. So how do I go through college Okay. now? How do I do it now? And what we're, when we get these kids come in from Somalia, say, what we do with them, in, instead of educating them well, right. we take them and give them a half an hour of instruction a day, okay. a half an hour okay. on English. Well, and then we toss them into other classes. It's like if you, tossed, you went to China and you sat in in the classes in Chinese, you ain't going to do very well. We're not, we're not setting them up. We're setting them up for failure. But, We're but, not but, setting but, them up for success. But Steve, what, what's the percentage of those kids as far as the masses? Is it is it seventy percent of the of the of the of the of the classroom or eighty percent of the classroom? In some cases it's pretty darn high. Yeah, but my point is that what about what about kids that are that were born here, raised here, going to school every day? What about them? As far as that's what I've been fighting English, for, right? Yeah, it's better yeah, education yeah, for, better all kids. For, for all kids. But, but, but the, what, what is the percentage, though? The percentage, you know, based on the kids that are failing, a lot of kids that are failing are, were born well, and raised here. A lot of kids who are graduating less are poor kids. You can go right across the That were from here. Yeah, it's poor kids. And it's poor kids from any place. And, and I'm not trying to take anything. And it's graduate, and it's a com. Well, I'm not sure the point you're making. No, the point, the I'm, point making, I'm making yeah, we is that so much we need time to educate to, all these kids. We're, st we're spending so much time with the kid who just, who's just come out of here because well, all we're these not spending enough immigration time with those kids. And this, that, and this. But what about those kids that are here, that, that have been well, here all this time? They are failing. And but they, right, but they have English all day. They have classrooms in English all day. Yeah, but the reason they, why they, don't, the reason why they can't them, get anywhere, they have no vocation. They have yeah. nothing, if you will, to base how to get a job. There's not any engagement either very much, in the, okay. particularly in the middle schools. Okay. But what I'm saying is if we take all those kids and we teach them all in Chinese, then guess what? They're going to fail worse. Not less. I would, I would think so. Yes, and so I'm, that's I'm what essentially we're doing with people who come in who speak some you know, who are from Somalia come in. We give them a half an hour a day. We don't orient them well to what okay. we're doing. We're okay. starting to do that in high school. But okay. what I'm saying is all the kids are important. That kid standing in I, our I, school, I, 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 he's just as important as that. I, I hear where you're coming from, but I'm also exactly. looking at the, all the dropout raised people in Southeast Portland, even oh, North, yeah. well, Northeast yeah, Portland. Not, no. they, they are struggling, we're, trying to make it, if you will. Came up at the and they don't have no damn job. Excuse this, the French. This, Got my point? This came and up we're at spending this all this board. time on this, right. this individual over here that just came in, all due respect, immigration, deal, illegal, or whatever. Got me? We're all kind of concerned about this. What can we do to help this, this I person? I don't think here? we're concerned about those kids. Really but we much. hear a lot about it. You hear about it, but they're not that okay, concerned okay. about it. If you give them a half an hour a day and you drop them into a class and, and it's all English and they can't speak okay. any English, how okay. concerned are you with them? Okay. Well, folks, as you can see, this is why we have Steve on. I mean, in all due respect, we are going to deal with the issue of Portland Public Schools. and that's, My job is engagement. In all due respect, here's his results. And I know where his, his head is. And hopefully the other school district, the other members of the board, his colleagues, are listening and looking at this particular show. And we invite them to come on if you will. And at times, if you will, I'd like to have both sides. Of course, I'm concerned. I'm sure Steve wouldn't have any problem with no, that, right? Have any problem okay? with that. Because the bottom line, those people who are elected to office, who represent us, like Steve, those are the kinds of mindset we need. Because, folks, we need to solve the problem. We got issues here. We've got, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got an economy that's failing. We need jobs. Jobs. We need trained personnel, if you will, and we're not going to get it unless we can. We can actually deal with the issues that are that are of concern. Some of the same concerns that we're talking here now with Steve, and you know, bottom line is he's not anti anything. His his interest is one thing. Those kids, at the end of the day, he wants those kids to be whole, being able to make it on their own. And all due respect, as one would say, as these baby boomers, I kind of fall in on kind of the that other end of the deal. I had the opportunity. What about the kids today? Are they going to have the opportunity so I can basically retire? That's a problem. Steve, it's always been a pleasure. It's a good deal. Any lasting points you want to make? Yeah, well, there, we have another we four or that. five hours. We could go on no, but hey, and really understanding well, the whole gonna, thing. And you know I'm going to no, give you a call. Uh, you know, well, the, <laughs> lasting, the lasting point for me is yes. I hope people... i got about two minutes here. I hope people will... It, it got one thing out of here, really. Right. One yeah. is they understand mm -hmm. something about... The state, the Governor Kitzhopper's approach to education right, isn't right. helpful. Okay. That's one thing. The second thing is let, to understand that the school boards 
governance system, how the school board is working, right. is not in the best interests of the kids in the school district or in the community itself. Mm -hmm. And so they need to, hopefully they would say, hey, look, this is not This is how it works, and it's not working well. See, what happens is, I didn't even know this when I was running for the school board. I would go down and watch a meeting, and oh, okay. And I know you meeting. go to meetings. You, you got, you, certain things happen, right, they right, go right, over right, stuff, right. have reports, right. da, da, da. But they don't, but I never understood, did it all done in the back room. I can't even actually get something on the agenda without the permission of Greg Belisle, I can't get it on the agenda. But you represent the people. I can't get it on the agenda. That's how bad the government is. Wow. wow. Hey, on okay. that particular note, I got to get you back here. By the way, tell me this. Who should we? Who should I call to get on the show to basically respond to the issues that we've been talking to? No, I don't know. Call any call anybody in the school board. The chair? Who, 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 sure. Uh, of your Blau colleagues. Would be, Greg Blau would be good. Greg Blau. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Greg, you're, you're invited. Come on over. Give me a call. 503-701-0457. Or better yet, why don't you give me one of my business cards? Yeah. that fair? Yeah, next okay. time I see him, I'll Steve's tell him. always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, Thanks very thank much, you. buddy. It's really a pleasure. And folks, thank you very much. Hey, if you got some concern, be at those meetings. Get involved, especially if you got kids. Go to those meetings and talk to those folks who have been elected to represent you. Okay? It's a pleasure. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care.